Welcome to this episode of the We Travel There podcast. We're in Leiden, Netherlands with my new friend Marina Krivinosova of RetoldMarketing.com. Marina moved to the Netherlands for her master's degree and fell in love with Leiden during her orientation week. She loves the architecture of the city and the hidden gems that keep daily life interesting. In this episode, Marina and I talk about seeing the castle ruins at Berg van Leiden, petting the kittens at Sophie Katten Cafe, and admiring the beautiful architecture of the Peterskirk Church. you hear about these three amazing experiences and so much more. If you know someone interested in visiting the Netherlands, I'd love it if you shared this episode with them. The show notes and our one-page guide to Marina's tips are available at wetravelthere.com forward slash Leiden. Now let's get started. The We Travel There podcast helps you travel like a local by interviewing guests from around the world to uncover the hidden gems of their city by finding out the best things to do, eat, drink, and see from a local's point of view. We love using hotel points to save money on travel, but figuring out the best hotel redemptions can be challenging. That's why we use Oase to research our trips. Oase was created to help bridge the gap between travelers and their loyalty programs. It takes the guesswork out of travel hacking by comparing cash and points prices for all the major hotel brands and destinations across the world, including this week's city. Sign up now at wetravelthere.com forward slash aways or use the promo code LEE2023 at aways.com to get $20 off your subscription. In early 2024, they're also launching flights so you can see live miles versus cash price comparisons on airline travel. If you join before their flights program launches, you'll get access to the program where it goes live free for no additional cost. Remember to use the promo code LEE2023 to get $20 off your subscription. Hey, Marina, welcome to the show. Hey, Lee, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Today, we're talking about a city called Leiden. It's in the Netherlands. I mean, a lot of people know about Amsterdam and The Hague and and things like that, but this is actually uh, what we're talking about before. It's a city that I think people that come to to visit you have said it's actually their favorite city. And it's about like kind of like halfway between Amsterdam and The Hague. Is that correct? Yes, it is. I'm I'm like thinking about the geography. Yes, that's exactly where it is. And yeah, a lot of my friends and family who visited, you know, I took them to Amsterdam, I took them to The Hague, as you mentioned, to a lot of different cities, but they all agree that Leiden is like the place to be. Oh, that's fantastic. So and that's uh, that's one of the reasons why there's a podcast is that we we want to highlight these smaller towns that have so much character and so much to offer without the huge price tags of some of the bigger cities. That's a huge benefit of it. I actually had a friend visit, a friend I met on LinkedIn, and he was asking places to stay. And I was like, if you stay in Amsterdam, you're going to pay so much more. And it's so not worth it. If you come somewhere like Leiden, it's more affordable. There's fewer options of where to stay, but it's so much more affordable. The food's more affordable. The entertainment's more affordable. It's just like, why wouldn't you, you know? No, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, looking at your background, I saw that you've actually lived in like 10 different places over the last seven years. Like, how did you end up in Leiden? And like, why is Leiden like the spot for you? So I actually ended up here by accident, which is something that always surprises people. But growing up in California in the US, I always knew that I wanted to end up in Europe. You know, as as a typical American, I'm like, oh, Europe, it's just this like big old thing. But I was thinking about Switzerland to be more specific, which again begs the question of, but why the Netherlands? Why Leiden? When I was looking at opportunities of moving abroad, moving to Europe, Switzerland wasn't really an option at the time. So I was like, okay, let's look into options. Let's see what's possible. And I found the Netherlands. And again, in the typical American fashion, I was like, Netherlands, Amsterdam, they have stroopwafels or stroopwafels as Americans call them, those like caramel wafers. And that's all I knew. Oh, and tulips, of course. Those are delicious. (laughs) Exactly. Not the tulips. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, that's what I knew of the Netherlands, but I was like, you know what? The opportunity's here. Let's go for it. So I ended up moving to the Netherlands. I initially came there to study abroad. I lived in Utrecht at the time, but then when I came back, I studied at Leiden University, actually in a different city, actually over in The Hague, but my orientation week was in Leiden, and when I was there, I was just in awe of the city. It was I think it was August It was a really warm August. The city was just like bustling with life and energy and it was beautiful. And I really just loved it. And fortunately, I got to go there also with my mom around that same time, show her around. And she immediately was like, this city's beautiful. She's like, the Hague is cool. Like, it's nice you live there, but it's nice Leiden's nearby. And then as life would have it, 
I ended up finding my permanent home in Leiden. My husband was living in Leiden at the time. And we ended up, well, he wasn't my husband back then, I should mention. <laughs> the guy I was dating at the time casually lived in Leiden. And before I knew it, we were married and we were living in Leiden together. And there came a point where we were exploring options of moving to a different city. And we looked at The Hague and Delft and a couple of different cities. And we looked at houses there. But every time I went there, like to an open house, I was like, nah, like this isn't it. I was like, I really want to stay in Leiden. So he felt the same. And that's what we ended up doing. And now it's my home. That is so fantastic. And now, before the episode, I was kind of researching hotels, you know, because I'm I'm always in that, that trip planning mode and everything. And it seems like, uh, like you mentioned, there are kind of limited options as far as like some of the bigger brands that I'm used to, like Marriott and Hilton and everything like that, uh, where I want to use my points. But I saw there were a lot of options in The Hague. And when we're thinking of like Amsterdam, which is a city most people know, The Hague, you know, people just know like the criminal tribunals and that type of thing, right? So like how far is Leiden from both of those cities? And so if, if somebody's planning their trip, they, that way they can kind of know, okay, is it reasonable for me to be able to, or realistic for me to be able to to go from Amsterdam to Leiden for a couple of days? Or is it something that's like really far away where it's like, okay, it's just too far for me to be able to make that happen? Well, it's so close by and the connection with the train is incredibly easy as well. So from Leiden Central Station to Amsterdam Central Station, that's about 35 minutes on one train. You don't have to get off. You just sit there for half an hour and you're there. And The Hague, depending on if you're going to the HS station or if you're going to the Central Station, it's about 10, 15 minutes at most. Oh, that's fantastic. That, that's like shorter than most people's commute like to work. So exactly. Uh, <laughs> that makes it super easy. Yeah. Cause I mean, overall, obviously the Netherlands isn't that big of a, of a country compared to like say the U S and everything like that. So it is pretty easy to, to uh, go from one city to the other. Yeah. It's definitely easy to travel around here. I would say one thing to keep in mind though, is that the distances aren't always what you think they are. Cause as I said, for these central stations and everything, the connections are great. But sometimes you're like, oh, there's a different city. So, for instance, we have Nordwijk, which is a city you could visit from Leiden. And when you look on the map, you're like, oh, that's even closer than Amsterdam. But, oh, my gosh, you have to get there by, like, I think a bus and maybe another bus. And you have to walk and you have to bike. Like, it is not conveniently located. And the time you spend on that journey and the energy is just insane. So don't let the distances fool you. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Well, let's talk about the, the distances and traveling and everything first. So, you know, I'm, I'm here in Nashville. I, I used to live in California, so we could talk about the California situation uh, later on. But coming from Nashville or in, anywhere in the U.S. over to Leiden, we would probably fly into Amsterdam. Is that correct? Yes, most likely. Okay. And then from Amsterdam to Leiden, like you said, that there's a train, makes it super easy. But would you recommend taking the public transportation or should we rent a car or, or just hire a service? How do we do that? So I would very much say that depends on where you want to go. Because if it's a shorter trip and you're really looking to hit up kind of the major cities or major cities, just cities with a good central station. So think Amsterdam, The Hague, Leiden, Delft, Utrecht. It would be very easy to get by on public transport and honestly more convenient because the Netherlands isn't necessarily designed for cars. Like, yeah, people drive cars. Most people have cars, but streets are very narrow. Parking is expensive and incredibly limited. It's just much easier when you're not dependent on a car. So I would say if you're just going to do that, then rely on public transport. However, there are certain places, as I said, if you're looking to go to the beach, um, Nordvik is by the beach, Kotvik by the beach. If you're looking to go to Hithorn, which is a city that's known as the Venice of the Netherlands, which is about an hour and a half drive from Leiden, you would definitely need a car because it really is virtually impossible to get there by public transport. So I would say look in advance where you want to go and see what the public transport situation is exactly in that part of the country. Now, along those same lines, you know, obviously paying for public transportation or paying for, for rides, do we use credit cards for that? Do we need local currency? Like, What do you recommend as far as uh, paying for things? That's a really good question. And that is something I was not prepared for when I moved here, because as an American, I had like five credit cards that I was always using. And I came here and most places didn't take credit cards. It was all debit cards, specifically the Maestro debit cards, which I didn't even know existed when I lived in the U.S. So it's usually debit cards or cash. And now these days, cash is really kind of going out of fashion. People are really moving to digital so if you don't have a relevant debit card that works in the Netherlands, 
you're going to want to get one. Okay. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we're used to, there's a couple of different networks. I, I can't remember off the top of my head that are predominant here in the U S but, uh, I know Maestro is, is another network there. So getting one of those or like Apple pay or Google pay, something like that. Is that what you're talking about with like digital forms of payment? Yeah, exactly. And be prepared that a lot of places just won't even have the credit card option. Like it's not a preference. It really comes down to, we do not accept it. If you're looking at maybe a major grocery store, we have Albert Hein, which is the blue one. That's what a lot of people know it as. <laughs> and if you go there, they just don't take credit card. Even, you know, to this day, they don't want to. They take debit card and at the registers, they take cash. But if you're going to self-checkout, it's exclusively debit cards. Oh, interesting. That makes me, that kind of breaks my heart because I'm all about earning the miles and points on my credit cards. So Exactly. I'm the <laughs> same way and I have not done that in ages and it makes me very sad. Oh, okay. I got to talk to my wife. If we're looking at moving, we can't move to Amsterdam because I, I, I wouldn't be able to earn any rewards. That's so, real though. No, I totally feel that. Let's get back on track before I start crying. <laughs> now, <laughs> so, okay. So uh, we fly into to Sheeple Airport over in Amsterdam, we take the public transportation to get to Leiden. And then once we're there, when we're thinking about where to stay for our hotel, are there certain areas of town that we should avoid or certain areas that we're like, oh, you need to stay in this area because it's close to certain attractions? So if you're looking to stay at a hotel that's by light and central station, which is the best place to stay, it's just super convenient from a transport perspective. I would recommend the Ibis Light and Center, which is pretty much right across the street from the station. So you don't have to worry about bus delays or dragging your luggage around or worrying how you're going to get there in the dark from the train station. It's just right there. Uh, good price, easy to access. And I, I'm not in any way sponsoring it. I wish I was because they would get me so much money from all the people I've brought to them. But yeah, I think that's like the best place to stay. I had a friend visit. He stayed there. He was so happy with that location. Other than that, um, I think most hotels will not be in areas that are unsafe. If you're going the Airbnb route, I would recommend staying away from Marinvike because that's kind of just known as not the best area of town. But other than that, you know, go crazy, find what works for you. Yeah, I was looking um, through a ways, it's an award search tool that I use when looking for hotels. And the, the best hotels that I saw, uh, there was a Hilton Garden Inn in Leiden. It was only 30,000 points a night or $195. So to me, that seemed like a pretty good option. But the other thing, you know, looking at you know, Marriott and Hilton and and Hyatt and, and stuff like that, a lot of the options were actually in the Hague. Like you said, it's probably 10 to 15 minutes away. So like there's a Voco uh, that's from IHG is like 38,000 points. And there's a Marriott, the Hague Marriott was like 37,000 points. So there are a lot of good options you know, to using miles and points, but unfortunately sometimes they're not going to actually be in Leiden itself, right? No, exactly. And it, I mean, it's easy enough to get to Leiden from the Hague. So if you are using points, you want to stay at a bigger chain, then that's definitely easy to arrange. So obviously you came from America to, to go to school there uh, in the Netherlands. And I mean, most of us don't learn Dutch in, in uh, American high schools. So when you came over there, was learning the language uh, difficult or, you know, how much of Dutch have you had to learn? Or And then for us, if we're going to come there and maybe go on a, on a week trip, are a lot of people going to speak English or is it something that we're, we're going to have to use Google Translate a lot to be able to communicate with everybody? So especially in the bigger cities, if you're not going to, you know, secluded village somewhere in the east of the Netherlands, the majority of people like in the 90% will speak English. If you go to a restaurant, if you go to a cafe, menus will be available in English. Your server, server will understand English. It's really easy to get by. However, if you want to be accepted and if you want to feel as, you know, one of the Dutch people, then you do need to know Dutch. That was a really interesting dynamic for me because I was told, you know, everyone speaks English and I experienced it firsthand. Everyone speaks English, but you're really like, you're really an outsider. They see you as, they don't see you as one of them when you don't speak Dutch. And it's not even that you don't speak Dutch. It's if you speak it with an accent or if you don't speak it well enough, you're still an outsider. So it's really hard to overcome that barrier. And for me, you know, as an American living here, I'm married to a Dutch person I have worked in companies that were predominantly Dutch. It's been a little tough and I, I do my best. I took classes. I passed my integration exam. So I speak it officially at the B1 level. I'm not going to torture you guys with that. Nobody <laughs> deserves to hear my Dutch, but it's hard. But I think as a traveler, it's very easy to get by. But if you're looking to build a home for yourself here, it can be kind of difficult. 
Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, Cause I know a lot of times when you travel and you're know, to a, a country that has a, a different language you know, other than English as like their prominent language, there's a couple of phrases that you if you can say them, at least it shows that you're trying. And I think that that goes a long way with, with most locals. So are, are there a couple of phrases that you'd recommend us learning or at least practicing so that way we don't butcher it too bad? I think, I mean, the best one, if you're just at a restaurant, if you ask someone for directions and you want to thank them, you say Dankuvel, which means thank you very much. And it's similar enough that you'll remember it, but it's still Dutch. So people will appreciate the effort. And another one that I would say, if you want to tell someone to have a nice day, if you're saying like, bye, have a good day, you would say fine a which means good day. That's one that I always use that, you know, people smile when I say it because they know I'm struggling, but they hear that and they're like, okay, she's putting an effort. So I'd say, Dankuvel, thank you. Fine, a dog. Have a good day. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can, I can do it. Uh, Dankuvel mm-hmm. and a uh, fine, a Yeah. Perfect. You're Dutch. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm collecting passports and, and stamps everywhere I go. <laughs> right on. So let's talk about uh, some of the best things to do in Leiden. Uh, obviously, we're not going to just come out there and hang out with you, although that would be awesome. We're going to come in and see some of the, the major attractions and some of the things that are unique to Leiden. So what should we do when we're there that, to just kind of create these amazing memories? So you, you just have to go to the castle ruins that are in the city center of Leiden. That's non-negotiable. Even if you think, ah, I'm not a really big history person, architecture. No, you have to go to the Burcht von Leiden, which, you know, you'll, sh- you'll, you'll share with people where that is. But it's beautiful castle ruins. And when you climb up to the top, you walk around this circular area where you can see a view of the city. And it's just fantastic. And when you look out the main gate to those ruins, you see the cathedral that's in the middle of the city. And it's just such a picturesque view. Like words can really not describe how beautiful it is. Oh, that sounds amazing. What are some of the other things you recommend us doing? I have a lot of different options for people of all tastes. So if you like cats and if you like coffee, you have to go to Sophie Cat and Cafe, which is the best cat cafe in the world. I'm not exaggerating. Um, I'm a huge (laughs) cat lover. And I'm a huge dessert enthusiast. So when I went to like Barcelona, when I went to Rotterdam, like so many places that I've gone, I try to find the cat cafes there. And they're nice. I mean, you pet the cats. It's cool. But this one is truly like other world, worldly. <laughs> um, the <laughs> owner is just the kindest woman ever. And she creates this hospitable environment where the cats are happy. The people are happy. The food is delicious. I know they partner with bakers of all sorts to get like the best products to people and the vibes. They're always so nice. Yeah. Everybody I've taken there has gone to cuddle some cats, drink some good coffee and just leave super happy. Literally just saying, Marina, I've never experienced something like that before. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, My my wife was not a cat person for long, for most of her life. And then we got a cat and now she's like totally into cats (laughs) and she absolutely loves coffee. So, I mean, this is like right up her alley. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, she'd love it there. (laughs) Let's see, what what are some of the other things? Are there like any historical museums or other, uh, obviously, you know, one of the things I love about Europe is that there's so much history there and and so many old buildings and and things of that nature. So what else should we do while we're there? For sure. So if we're talking museums, there's a Rembrandt Museum. So you definitely have to go to the Rembrandt Museum. I can't say his name, Rembrandt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have to go to the Rembrandt Museum. The art there, I mean, if you like art and if you like history, you, you'll just love it. You have to go there. And I would also say you'd have to visit the Peterskerk. And Kerk means church, so Peter's Church, which is a giant church that's in the city center. I, I don't want to mess up the name of the style. I think it's built in the Gothic style. I'm always confusing those words, but I think that's the one. It's this beautiful Gothic style cathedral. And it is so tall and it's just, I don't know, as an American, you know, we're not used to that old architecture. We're used to smaller things, we're used to newer things, but Europe has this rich history and it's just insane that a city that so many people haven't heard of, you know, Leiden has this magnificent church in the middle of it. Oh, that is amazing. I I love the architecture of, of Europe. Like you said, like the Gothic style and and some of the other, some of the other styles. I, I admire the museums. You know, I appreciate the, the effort people put into like, you know, Rembrandt and everybody else, as far as like the paintings and the sculptures. But to me, like the real artwork for me is like the actual, the the buildings themselves. Yeah. 
No, I'm right there with you. I like art and I like museums, but just seeing the architecture of cities, that's it. Nothing matches it, you know? And then, uh, as far as like a, I saw there's like a natural history museum, the Naturalis. Mm -hmm. That is a really cool place. You actually mentioned the Hilton that's in Leiden. So the Hilton isn't very conveniently located for the city center, but it is conveniently located for Naturalis there. I think they're like right nearby. And that is a huge natural history museum. I went there by accident. I don't remember how I found out it exists. I think someone just casually <laughs> brought it up and I had nothing to do on like a random Tuesday. And I was like, okay, let's check it out. I was blown away. That museum, it is massive. I, I don't remember how many sections it has, but I remember wandering there for hours and just reading about the history and seeing like, you know, the stories about the animals, the people, everything that once was, it's really cool. So if you're into that sort of thing, you have to go there. And if it's raining, which it will be because it's the Netherlands, you should definitely check it out. Nice, nice. Now, one of the things that when people think of the Netherlands is windmills, right? Like that's like, it's wooden shoes, it's windmills and, and those type of things. Uh, so a trip to Netherlands wouldn't be complete without seeing some sort of windmill around. I think there's one called uh, Molende Put. Yes. Is that, did I say it correctly? Yes. Well, uh, to me, um, I'm American. Full disclosure, <laughs> reminding everyone before Dutch people listen to this and judge my pronunciation, but that is how I would say it. Molen means windmill. That is one of the windmills that we have in Leiden. We have a few you'll actually see. Actually, in the area where I live, we're not going to put this on the map. You guys can look for it based on my descriptors, but there's a windmill in which people actually live. So people still live in windmills sometimes. And the windmill that's in the city center, it's a really cool one. I believe it was fully functional, like grinding flour until 1967 when the owner passed away. And then it became a museum. Oh, wow. That's amazing. When we went to Amsterdam, my, my son and I went outside of the city to a, a place where they have, um, I can't remember the name off, off the top of my head, but they have a bunch of windmills out there. Uh, Zanshans, that's what it is. And you know, when you see windmills from a distance, they don't look like they're moving that fast. But when you get close to them, man, those, I guess, rudders or arms or whatever they're called, when they're whipping by you, man, they're, it's like whoosh. And you better stand back because those things are, are going pretty fast. I had the same experience. Like, yeah, you always look at it from a distance. You're like, oh, it's barely moving, but then it's swinging when it's right by you. So that's cool when you get it put into perspective like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, a lot of times when I travel, I travel with my kids and, you know, they have lots of energy because they're young and I'm getting older and I, <laughs> I don't have as much energy. And so <laughs> I always look for like parks or botanical gardens, those type of things, let them run around and, and hopefully not run into rose bushes and, and hurt themselves. <laughs> so are there some parks or, or like botanical gardens or those type of things that are in Leiden that we should recommend going to see? So in that specific situation, I would recommend two things in this order. I would recommend you go to Hedplansun, which is a park in the city center. Um, it has a little river, canal river. It's kind of mid-size, <laughs> kind of going through it. And it's beautiful. There's trees, there's flowers, especially if you go there in the springtime or summer. It's just so beautiful. And there's some birds there, actually. There's just a random cage with random tropical birds. Um, they're taken care of. Um, it's all good. They're taken care of. <laughs> they're but just, you just like don't, left there. No, no, no. But you just don't expect it because you go there and you're like, oh, it's just a park in the city center. And there's just so much room to run around there and just kind of enjoy the vibes. If you want to have a picnic, if the kids want to play. And when, in the summer, people even swim in the river slash canal. So I would really recommend going there first. And after that, you should go to the Hortus Botanicus. It's Leiden University's Botanical Garden. And it is just really neat. It has an indoor and outdoor area. It has so many interesting flowers and plants. There's also like signs telling you about them, their history, how they got to the Netherlands. And I think that's another really cool addition for people who just kind of want to move around, walk around and enjoy the nature vibes. No, absolutely. And, and so... You mentioned the canals there, and obviously one of the things you want to do and, and have that unique experience is actually going into the canals, taking a boat ride, something like that. Do you have any recommendations for that? 100%. There's actually a place that's not too far from the central station. I want to say it's less than a 10-minute walk, but it's called Boaches and Broaches, which means boats and sandwiches. But it's this really cute place, and they do boat tours. And, and it's, again, it's my favorite place for boat tours in Leiden. I take everyone there. I feel like I've memorized the tour by heart. 
it's really nice because not only is the route really cool, like you get to see so many of the nice things in Leiden, but also they tell you fun facts and they tell you about the history of the city. Like, um, I'm, I'm thinking, what's a random fun fact? So we have this gin, you know, the alcoholic drink that's made in Leiden. And it's actually named after a serial killer who lived in Leiden. And it was a female serial killer. So it's like a, just a random thing. But you never learn that usually, you know, going to Leiden. But you hear that on the boat tour and you're like, what? Like, who does that? But it's just, you know, random fun fact. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, normally it's us white guys that are they're doing that. And so um, <laughs> it's obviously unique that it's a female and and uh, even more unique that the alcohol is named after other person. Yeah. So. And it's a gin you'll see everywhere in Leiden. You'll see it a lot in the Netherlands. But, you know, after you see it, after you know that story, you're like, oh, that's, you know, who that random lady is in the picture. It's just really interesting. I like fun facts like that. That is really interesting. Well, Marina, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all these amazing tips for Leiden. I've learned so much and it's like such a cool city and it's like not that far from two major destinations that a lot of people travel to. So they should definitely come out there and visit. But now it's time for the final countdown. If somebody only had time for one meal when they visited Leiden, where should they go and what should they eat? I would 100% recommend that they go to the, oh, how do I pronounce this? Oh, this is where my American, American vibe comes in. For Boden Tuchang, my husband can fortunately not hear me say that because that was horrible, but it means entry restricted. And it's a restaurant where everything is themed around do not enter signs. And it sounds really weird, but it's actually a super nice restaurant. And they have meals that with a like punny names, like behind bars, I think is what they call their rib dish. So they have, you know, random things like that. But the food is always amazing. The menus are changing every couple months. But everything there is great. Like every time I've gone there, I've been happy with everything I got. It's a combo of like Italian, French and Dutch food in the best way possible. And it just never disappoints. So if you're going to get a meal, that's the one you got to get. That is so fun. Yeah, it's it's cool. They got the, the the theme. And then it's also great that where the, the menu changes on a regular basis. So that way, even if you went last time you visited, you can come back again and, and have an entirely new new experience. Exactly. I've never had the same meal twice. Right on. So like you said, you came to the Netherlands for college, you visited Leiden and you're like, oh my God, this is where I have to move. And so since then, you've created a lot of great memories, obviously getting married, you starting your family and, and, and everything along those lines and building your business. So during your time, what's one of the most memorable experiences you've had in the city? So this might not seem super exciting to most people, but in the Netherlands, one of the traditional foods is herring, which is a fish that they eat raw. And the traditional way of eating herring is to hold it up by the tail over yourself and kind of bite down on it, which is a very messy way to eat it because it's usually covered in pieces of onion and pickles. And I've always seen people do it, but I was like, I'm not ready. I'm just not ready to make that happen. I'm not ready to make a scene on the street with, with this like <laughs> fish that I can't eat properly. But Leiden was the first city where I finally went for it. And this actually happened years after I moved there. But I was like, this has to be the place. It has to be the Leiden market. Like this is where the vibes are, you know? So that's a memory that stays with me. And my friends always like to make fun of me with that video because I was um, getting onions all over the place, but that's just part of the vibe. You have to. <laughs> nice, nice. And your friends got it on video so that now they can make fun of you for the rest of your life, right? Exactly. As good friends should. <laughs> See, like, that might be strike two. Like, no rewards on credit cards. Eating herring, I, I'm not too sure about that. So that might be strike two for me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm ready to move to, to the Netherlands yet or not. It's an acquired taste, but you got to try it. <laughs> right on. Well, speaking of something to like kind of wash away the, the taste of, of herring, <laughs> where's the happiest happy hour in Leiden? Oh, that would have to be Paco Chow. Paco Chow is the place to be when you're in Leiden. It's, I'm not going to re reveal too much around it because it's a really fun cafe with a really fun concept. And usually when people get to Paco Chow, when they get to the address and they open the first door, they're greeted with a very small room and they have no clue where to go. And when you've been there a few times and you know the drill, you kind of look at them and you're like, oh, ho, ho, I'm going to watch them try to figure it, out, figure it out. And sometimes people walk out, they have no clue how to get in. But I'm like, that's part of the appeal. So that's where I would always tell people to go just for the vibes, but also for the amazing desserts and cocktails. I'm a huge dessert and cocktail person. And every time I go there, I, I don't know, I, I can't explain just how amazing it is. 
Instead of a typical dessert menu, they bring out the desserts on a platter, which would make you think that they've been sitting there for a while and they're not great anymore. But no, they're always so fresh. And the cocktails, they're just always made like according to how a good cocktail should be. And in the Netherlands, a big problem that I've had before with the service is if they make something that's not great, that's kind of on you to figure out. It's not on them. But with Paco Chow, they always ask, they're like, is your cocktail good? And if they even see you kind of wince even a little, they're like, no, give it back. We're going to redo it. We want you to be happy. And I just love that level of customer service. Oh, that is fantastic. Now, it sounds like the way you're describing it, it's almost like an escape room. But like, instead of trying to escape, you're like, you're trying to like, go deeper into the experience. Yeah, that that's a good way of looking at it. I like that. <laughs> now, uh, in the description that I read, it's something you said, it's something like a cross between uh, Narnia and Alice in Wonderland. Is that kind of a, a good description for that? That is the 100% best description. I'm very proud of myself for coming up with that in that moment. <laughs> I forgot I even said that. I was just fantasizing about those cocktails and desserts. Oh, that is so that is so cool. And I saw something about, obviously, you know, you're drinking, you're probably going to go to the bathroom anyways. But apparently there's another reason that you should go to one of the bathrooms when you're there at Paco Chow. The bathroom is the the hidden mystery of Paco Chow. It's always really funny to tell your friends to be like, hey, don't forget to go to the bathroom. And they're like, are you okay? But you're like, no, 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 you have to. There's a big button there and you have to press it. And you just have to trust me on this. All right. Yeah, <laughs> my, my mind is definitely peaked. I'm not <laughs> sure exactly what's going to happen, but uh, I think I may have to book a trip just to find out. It's colorful and it is fun. That's all I have to say. Nice. Well, one of the things I always do whenever I travel is check out the local pizza. So where's the best place for pepperoni pizza in Leiden? Without skipping a beat, it is a place called Oso Le Mio. I love it passionately. I, I mean, I've been to Italy a few times and I love a good Italian pizza. And I know that's really hard to get abroad. But Oso Le Mio is the place you would do that. Fantastic. Now, obviously, you, you travel back and forth. I'm sure you come back to visit family. And then when you're in Europe, I'm sure you're traveling all over the place. Uh, what's one of your best travel tips that you can share with the audience? One of my best travel tips is don't always book the cheapest flight. Actually do your research and see, first of all, is the airport a good one? And are the connections actually worthwhile? Because, you know, you're always tempted to get the best deal, but sometimes the best deal isn't actually the best deal coming from somebody who spent 11 hours at the, where was it, the Istanbul airport overnight with nowhere to go. Just do your research. Don't try to uh, save money around every corner. Sometimes it's worth spending a little more for that peace of mind and comfort. No, I totally agree. I'm somebody that's totally spoiled by all the lounges I get to visit and everything like that at airports. I'm all about the lounge and making sure that it is a great experience when you're inside the airport getting the free drinks and sometimes massages or just getting even sometimes a nice shower after a long flight makes all the difference in the world. So I'm all about finding, making sure you're going to the right airport versus just the cheapest. And sometimes the, the difference in, in cost is only like $50, right? And so sometimes just spending just a little bit more, you're going to have a, such a great experience. Mm -hmm. Well, Marina, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all these amazing tips for Leiden. I've learned so much and, and so did the audience. Can you tell the audience a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, of course. I'm Marina and I am a marketer. I have my own B2B content marketing agency where I work generally with mid-sized companies just because they're the ones who are usually in the development stage where my marketing would be relevant for them. I work with all sorts of companies, primarily mid-sized enterprises because they're the ones at the development stage where my marketing help would make sense. But I work with companies in all verticals, anything from travel to finance to tech, kind of you name it. That's why I decided to start my own agency so I could have that freedom so that no two days, no two clients are the same. And yeah, that's what I'm up to these days. Well, fantastic. If somebody has questions about your business or about Leiden, uh, what's the best way to reach you on social media? Best way would be through LinkedIn. I think I'm on LinkedIn almost every day. So just DM me and I'll get back to you. Fantastic. Well, we'll definitely include links to that in the show notes. And again, Marina, it's been great talking to you and we look forward to seeing you when we travel there. Thanks so much, Lee. What an awesome conversation with Marina. I've been to the Netherlands a couple times, but never made it to Leiden. The next time I visit, I'll be sure to stop by the Cat and Cafe before heading out to explore the city's attractions. You can find all the links we talked about today and our one-page guide to Marina's tips at wetravelthere.com forward slash Leiden. We want to say thank you to Waze for being today's affiliate partner. 
Away shares recommendations for the best redemptions of your hotel points in cities around the world. The service even compares cash versus points rates, so you can decide which option is best for your trip. Go to wetravelthere.com forward slash aways, or use my promo code Lee to get $20 off. And if you sign up before Aways flights launches, you'll get that feature free once it goes live later this year. Join us next time as we talk to my good friend Paulette Perhatch about the best things to do in Gainesville, Florida. In this episode, Paulette and I talk about visiting the butterfly rainforest at the Florida Museum of Natural History, hiking through a sinkhole forest at Devil's Mill Hopper, and canoeing the crystal clear water at Itchnitucky Springs State Park. We hope you join us when we travel there. I love hearing your feedback about the show. Send me a tweet at We Travel There or email me at wetravelthere.com for us contact to share your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and tell me what you like most. Make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast app. That way you won't miss any of our upcoming destinations. <music>